All right, how's it going, guys? I'm the Kiwi Gamer, and welcome to RL Craft, where uh, in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can get yourself some dragon steel ingots in RL Craft. Now, before we get started with today's tutorial, though, I do want to go ahead and mention that the current version of RL Craft does not contain the most updated version of the Ice and Fire mod and the Spartan Fire mods which are basically essential in actually making all of this stuff that you see before me. <laughs> so you'll need to go ahead and update those mods. All you really have to do is just download the mods from CurseForge, uh, go into your mods folder with the correct mod version, and then just basically replace them from there. I will also go ahead and include a download link in the description below for both the mods that you need, so that way you guys can find it rather easily and go ahead and update it. So to go ahead and get started here, now, Dragon Steel, the reason why people want Dragon Steel is because it's actually absolutely crazy in the RL Craft mod pack itself. Because if you'll notice over here, all of the Dragon Steel weapons in armor are honestly absolutely insane compared to most all the other weapons and stuff in the RL Craft mod pack. Like, even just the pickaxe itself. I mean, the Fire Dragon Steel pickaxe. Look at that. 23 attack damage. That's actually insanely stupid. <laughs> But yeah, it's basically like that for all the other stuff. Oh, also don't mind all the Tinker's Construct stuff here. That's uh, something I added. Not important for this. But yeah, there's all sorts of different weapons and stuff that you can make with the Dragon Steel. And that's why, honestly, it's incredibly worth it to actually try and get all this stuff. Now, a couple of things that you actually want to go ahead and start doing first is you'll want to be a little bit far ahead in the game. Like, probably it, at the least full diamond armor and maybe a decent dragon bone weapon or something like that because you got to start killing these dragons as much as i love them and as much as the world loves them they, they need to die because whenever you kill them you can go ahead and grab all their scales and bones which are essential to actually getting the dragon steel ingots uh to make all the stuff and it's kind of a lengthy process to be entirely honest now, the starting out crafting recipe to actually start what you need for this is you're actually going to need dragon scale blocks, which are rather expensive because dragons don't always drop all that many scales. But yeah, but you're going to need nine dragon scales to craft one block of, I believe, the same color because each one has their own different color for the scale block. And yeah, you also need to do that for the ice dragon scales if you want the ice dragon steel stuff like I have set up over there. So the reason that you want these dragon scale blocks, though, is because you want to be able to make yourself a dragon forge, which is actually the thing that you use to create the dragon steel, which I will show you guys in just a second. But to build the thing, you're going to need a couple of blocks. You're going to need dragon forge bricks, dragon bone bricks, dragon forge aperture, and the dragon forge core. Now, all these, they're rather simple crafting recipes, but the materials that you need are not simple at all. So, for the fire dragon steel, you will need, or for the fire dragon steel bricks, sorry, you will need to get blocks of scales. You will also need to get stone bricks. And I can't remember how much you need, but I think it's like around 29 blocks of this thing completely to build the dragon forge itself. It's rather expensive. You do get four blocks out of this whole entire crafting recipe right here. And also, same thing goes for the ice dragon, uh, dragon forge blocks up here. And yeah. Now, you'll also need to go ahead and build yourself a dragon forge aperture, which is actually going to be the main part where the dragons start spewing their either icy coldness or fiery hotness into the actual forge to start making the dragon steel. As with the Ice Dragon Forge, it goes with the same, just basically the same recipe. You need four iron ingots and four of the Dragon Forge bricks, and you'll get yourself the aperture. Now, the core is also a little bit different, because you do still have to kill at least one dragon. You need to go and get his heart. It doesn't matter the level or anything like that. My dragons are now sleeping, so that's nice. But yeah, it doesn't matter the level or anything. You'll get a heart basically every single time you kill a dragon. All you have to do is just surround it by dragon forge bricks and you got yourself one core which is all you need same goes with the ice dragon forge now the last component you're going to need is dragon bones which if you're killing dragons already you're honestly going to get plenty of these things like crazy so you just need to do uh three by three and it gives you the dragon bone blocks which are essential for the dragon forge also but the cool thing about these blocks is they cannot be broken by dragons 
actually rather nice, to be entirely honest. Yeah. So now that's basically all the blocks that you need to actually build this thing. And luckily, the structure isn't that difficult to build. It's actually rather easy. If you look at it, you'll actually need, let me see, about 5, 10, and then 7. So about 17 Dragon Forge regular blocks. You'll also need one Aperture, one Dragon Core, and then 8 Bone Blocks. So it's, again, it's, it's still rather expensive, but honestly, the payoff is absolutely worth it. Now, to build the thing, it's actually rather easy. So all you have to do is just do a little pattern like this. You will be doing dragon bone blocks like here. Then the core, make sure that goes right in the middle of the structure. And then the aperture, it doesn't matter exactly what side you put it on. You could have it on any side, but you cannot place more than one in the structure. It, it has to be only one. But you do also want to make sure that the aperture is going to be facing where you have your dragon. So that way he can actually blow into the thing. So I'm just going to have this one facing right here and then surround this with dragon forge bricks and then more dragon bone blocks and then finish it off with dragon bone forge bricks. And that's the structure. You'll know it's actually working whenever you see that the sides here where the aperture possibilities could actually go will start uh, kind of lighting up like this, kind of like a furnace. Same thing goes with the Ice Dragon Forge, as it is blue because fire... I don't know. Is that supposed to be like blue fire or something? I honestly have no idea. Now, after you have your finished forge here... Now, the really cool thing is, whenever you right-click on it... I don't know... No, you do have to right-click on these particular bricks right here. It really doesn't matter which ones. Just as long as you can actually access a forge. Uh, but the cool thing about it is, all you have to do is just add Fire Dragon Blood and Iron Ingots... And just let a dragon kind of do its job spewing its fire in this thing. And it'll start making the dragon steel. Unfortunately, it takes so freaking long to make one dragon steel ingot. Seriously. Now, here comes for, like, the majorly difficult part. There's a couple options on how you can actually get a dragon to power these forges. Right now, I have a friendly dragon. This one is mine. I can ride it. I can do basically anything that I want. Unfortunately, these things are also rather rare to come by because you have to find yourself a stage four or five dragon that's a female, kill it, get its egg, raise it on your own like it's the baby that you never had, and then get it past stage three, and then it should be okay to start actually using for your dragon forge. But there is actually one other way to do this. If you have, if you got the guts, I mean, it's possible. But you can actually make yourself some bone fencing right here, which I got the recipe. And if you get some of this, and you also get yourself a iron chain, which is actually also very, very helpful. Uh, get one of these, which you can make by finding iron chain links. The way you can find these things is actually by dragon nests scattered all over the world. They're in the chest usually, or actually even in underground dragon dens where you can find stage four or five dragons. So using these couple of items, what you can do is actually capture yourself a rogue dragon if you really want to. It isn't the most easiest thing to do, that is that is for sure. Now that also kind of reminds me, if you are going to capture a dragon, instead of actually just like taming one from birth, I highly suggest taking your dragon forge and put it wherever you find a dragon so that way you don't have to take it so far away. Because it could be an absolute pain trying to drag a dragon literally all across the land just to get to a dragon forge. Okay, so what I'm about to do may not be exactly advisable by most RL craft players because they know how much dragons can be an absolute pain, but we're going to go ahead and spawn ourselves a rogue dragon here. Hopefully it will actually be of level and not like a tiny baby one. So let's go ahead and spawn our dragon over here. Oh, okay, that's actually perfect. Okay, so here's what you can do. Whenever you set your fire, uh, your dragon forge could be ice or fire. Set a bone fence around here, because the reason why you want a bone fence particularly is because the dragons will not be able to break it. You do want to be careful though, because the dragons can break the blocks around it and kind of dig themselves into a hole. But it's it still usually is fine. You can still actually get the guys to do the thing. Now the dragon itself over here. You cannot use regular leads on this guy. You actually have to use an iron chain on this guy because they are unbreakable by them. 
And literally all you have to do is just right click on them and they'll start following you just like any other mob with a regular lead. Which actually also reminds me with the chain, you can use it with uh, basically every other mob too. But it's mostly essential for the dragons. So once you have your dragon in your chain, all you want to do is just right click on the guy. And now basically he's stuck here for the rest of his life. Yeah, the dragon is now a slave and will basically do your bidding. So that's the other way to go ahead and get yourself a dragon to actually start trying to power the fork. Now, if you'll notice, the dragon does not start spewing fire randomly at the fork whenever he feels like it. You actually have to go ahead and put the items in here. So to show this off, let's go ahead and put our fire dragon blood and iron ingots in here. Now, if he's actually close enough, which it looks like he is because it looks like he's trying to spurt fire, but if he's close enough, he should actually start spewing fire straight into the forge. Unfortunately, our dragon here is wanting to have a couple of issues. There he goes. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, this is the progression bar, which actually looks really cool. <laughs> It shows uh, this, and this is the progression. The thing is, instead, you know how like a furnace, you have the arrow and it just slowly fills up? Yeah, you have to go through the entire thing all the way to here. <laughs> and it takes so long to do. I mean, seriously. It, it's, it's a tedious process, but like I said before, it is most definitely worth it. So this should give us our first dragon steal. If you wouldn't fly away... Yeah, see, this is the problem with capture dragons. They are kind of pains. Like, you try and do one thing, and then they want to do the other thing. It's just it's just not worth it half the time. Okay, so I think I finally fixed the dragon. Um, <laughs> he's kind of doing his thing here. So, yeah. All you have to do is just let it go. You get your fire dragon steel ingots, and then you can go ahead and make yourself some pretty decent armor, some pretty decent weapons, and some other cool stuff. And you know what, actually, let's go ahead and show off the Ice Dragon Steel too. So let's throw you in here, you in there, and you'll start spewing out your stuff, right? Or you gotta be a little bit closer, I assume. Yeah, there we go. And this stuff will start, um, not cooking, I don't think. I would say, um, I, I don't know. It, it's doing its thing. I don't know. I wouldn't consider that to be cooking. Now, there are a couple properties with the dragon steel items that you use, uh, like the dragon steel armor, the ice dragon steel armor, and the fire dragon steel armor. If I could find it real quick. I think I passed it. Yeah, this stuff increases protection from dragon breath attacks, and it's basically the same for each one. I don't know if the ice one only worked for ice dragons or if it actually works for both. I don't know about the fire ones uh, on the same side. It's, it's kind of weird, but the weapons, the weapons actually have major differences in what they do. Now, the fire dragon steel items will basically just set things on fire and have pretty decent knockback. Like, I'm going to go ahead and set this mocker right over here. Yeah, he got set on fire. And he also died in one hit. And that's an unenchanted sword because it has 25 attack damage. That's actually insane. Now, the ice dragon steel... Uh, freezes targets. I don't believe it has any knockback because why would you want to knock back item or guys if you're trying to freeze them? So Yeah, basically just freezes them. They get slow for a little bit and encased in ice. It's actually very very nice and Really it's I mean they're, they're OP Seriously these weapons and stuff everything that you can get from this all overpowered now, I think that's everything that there is to need to know about dragon steel ingots in RL Craft and how to get them and what you can do with them. Now, if there is anything I missed, I would really appreciate it if you guys leave comments on what I missed so that way people can find them and they can check it out for themselves just in case I did miss anything because knowing me, it's definitely a possibility that I have missed some stuff. So, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, more tutorials on stuff you can do in RLCraft, please let me know. I would gladly do more, more of these kind of things. It's a lot of fun setting up. It's a lot of fun teaching people things that they may not know how to do. So, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. And you all are awesome.